Welcome to Lex's World. So today it's time for my LED lighting guide for you indoor growers. This is an episode that's been requested for years, but I've purposely put off doing it. The reason? I did not feel that it was worth it for the average grower to get LED over HID before now. So the last few years I just did HID episodes, which I'll link to in the description. HID had better spectrum, huge lumens, and very importantly, it had cheap hardware. LED lighting was interesting, but not a good purchase for either average growers looking for reasonably priced equipment, or pro growers looking for top quality performance. However, a few years have made a big difference. LEDs have gotten much better while getting cheaper, and we are now at the point where as an indoor grower you can feel good about choosing either or. And in short order, LEDs will overtake HIDs due to their much lower environmental footprint, both in operation and in disposal, by the way. LED lighting is about 60% cheaper than HID for power consumption. Some of you might think that's an overestimate, since a lot of people say 50%, but remember, for your HID side of the equation, you also have to add the wattage of the ballast, not just the bulb, which gets you closer to 60% savings. Now let's get to know the qualities and basics of LED lighting. Old LEDs had no cooling fans and two bulb colors on them red and blue, to hit the two most desirable spectrum points hard while missing all the others. That made the old LEDs crappy, and they had a bad reputation going back 10 years. They didn't hit enough of the total spectrum for best plant growth, and results, especially during flowering phase, were subpar. Those two band LEDs are still on sale in a couple places, but they are now obsolete. Avoid them. The other lights to avoid on the market tend to be shockingly cheap ones made by no-name companies in Asia. You'll find lots if you go on eBay and search up by lowest price. It's worth mentioning that many base components on high-end LEDs are still made in Asia, but at least high-end brands are known for putting the components together in a proper way. LED light manufacturing is tough, and not just any amateur can do it. Your mid-range LEDs are ones that I would consider buying. They're not shockingly cheap, but also not $700 per light. And they offer you some more features. First off, they have more than two bands. Sometimes they have as many as 10 or 12 separate bands of light. That way they cover far more of the spectrum. Sometimes they also offer high-intensity white LEDs that actually broadcast a very robust spectrum by blasting red, green, and blue colors in one, but it appears white to the naked eye. What else? Well, instead of being cooled by a metal slug like cheap fans, the mid-range LEDs actually have built-in fans to cool them. On the higher end of the mid-range options is lighting that offers many colored emitters on a single chip. This is known as chip on board, a technology that improves the spectrum output even further. There's lots of stuff going on in the mid-range and what drops into the mid-range is always improving. Keep that in mind. The super high-end LED lighting has all these features now, but everything is refined. These lights go back to being fanless, but not because they use a slug, but because they run so cool that they don't need a fan. They're full spectrum, so full spectrum that they even go a bit into the UV zone. And the craftsmanship on them is so good that they actually have the insanely long life that LEDs are advertised to have. So that's kind of the list of features from cheap to expensive LEDs. So of course you're like, well Lex, you're gonna recommend some brands or what? Well, I will link to four different LED fixtures in the description that are all good enough that I'd consider buying them myself at those prices. I'll try to link to both mid-range LEDs and something super high-end. 
For the super high-end recommendation, I chose Black Dog LED, a company that, as of the date of this video, makes some cutting-edge, well-priced lights. Now, the reason I say as of now is this industry is moving quick. There's countless startups in the world of LED growing, and I hope to talk about some of them in the future. It's not just the bulbs for your house that are developing fast and furious. And with those thoughts on LEDs, you're now ready for my episode on UV lighting, so I guess I'll start working on that. Uh, I will think I'll put it out in a few weeks. That's the show. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to subscribe, hit that like button. See you next time.